All right, so shout out to shout out to me and shout out to Hudson. We're back. Yeah. We're back giving y'all what y'all desired for so long and uh due to conflict of, of interest, we weren't able to get it out when y'all wanted it. But <laughs> we're here to give it to you when you need it. Yeah, man. It's we waited a while. We thought that, you know, making y'all wait about three months was probably the best thing we could have done. And I do believe that we've both been through enough life experiences that it'll be a little bit uh fresher than it would have been. We just dropping these hoes deuce after deuce, you know. Yeah. So as you may know, I am Jabir McBuckets, uh, the sole provider of shitty anime content and uh, really bad uh, meme format videos. And here's my co-host. This is Hudson, and I am known for being a pretty awful person all around. And that's about it. That reminds me of that, um, what's the name of it? Uh, the Piece of Shit album by, like, Father, back in, like, 2016. Oh, I'm a piece of shit. Oh, man, I listen to that shit every week, at least. That's still my shit. I, I think Father, we're, we're going to enter actually introduce topics in a little bit but i think father has one of the more like underrated like runs in the underground yeah no i mean i felt like who's gonna get fucked first and then young hot ebony i think it was the other one as well as uh i'm a piece of shit was a pretty incredible run like it was just my kind of like melodic down tempo type of like dark like shit like he really made the music for me I felt like, and then he went on a hiatus for like two or three years, and then he came out with fucking awful swim or something <laughs> for adult swim, and it was a disappointment, and then it's over now for him it It's tough because that that aroma that followed a song like Lanes or um I think your favorite was um. The the party song with McConan. Oh yeah, party on me! Holy shit! Those those songs had like such a like a trail to them after they finished that you just were enticed to go back. And uh, awful swim. It's not like bad, but it's like it's like him making like weird weirdo trap music, and it, it it's not for just like general fans of like alternative hip hop. It's for like. Twitter women who have like six inch, not ten bows, like Doc Martens in their Twitter like header, and yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's the right crowd, you know. Yeah, it's not at all. It's not as like it's not his core group, you know. But um, that was something that really disappointed me last year. Let me think. What else was a big disappointment in twenty eighteen? As far as albums go. Uh, culture too is that? Can we can we speak on that? <laughs> oh God, let me tell you something. Culture to me, especially like the past few days, because you know it was Culture Day on the twenty seventh. Um, also my birthday, but it was mainly Culture Day. I <laughs> honestly celebrated the fact that Culture came out more than my own birthday. Jesus, um, it was really, it's just a great album a lot of people want to talk down and people have been like hey it wasn't that good I had a dude literally like you know dm me on snapchat be like hey man it was all right but it wasn't like as good as you say it was and that's wrong because culture was literally it would have been album. it was album of the year the only reason it wasn't is for me is because i like playboy cardi so much and uh, it's just literally a top three top five trap album and um and then culture 2 came out and literally the only song worth listening to in that entire bloated piece of shit album was uh walk it talk it and that was mainly because of the music video and that was it that was the whole fucking thing that was supposed to be like the climax of the migos and it was literally like this is it. What y'all saw before this, that was the only good shit, and it's only downhill from here. I think I think it's tough because 
when you look at um, I'm pulling it up now, but when you look at how they formatted products beforehand, they are actually like kind of close to like song length with um, Culture Two, but it wasn't like just songs for the sake of having songs, you know. Uh, yeah. with with and it wasn't just them. It was like pretty much any like quality control out artist. In 2017, 2018, mainly like 2018, they were like just dropping nothing but like 20 track. Fuck. Oh man, it was fucking bad. Like I'm glad that they're starting to cool off with that shit because they realized that everyone hated it. But like, it really climaxed with that Chris Brown album. Oh, that shit. The <laughs> shit had like 50 songs on it or something. It was like four hours long. Like you literally gotta take time off of work. Just to listen to like half of the bitch, like I remember, I remember when I checked his Instagram after it came out because I was like, I didn't, I never listened to it, but like I always saw like the promotion coming up to it. You know, Chris Brown's a pretty like core following, which is yeah, you know, he's an, he's a talented artist, he, he deserves it. He's good. That motherfucker could dance. I mean, like he was good, but um, no, that shit right there. He had uh, asked his his fans um, in various ways to to put the because he knew they weren't listening to it, but to play the album like on your phone or something like that, and just let it play the entire night. Like you don't have to listen to it; just play it, set it down before you go to bed, and then just let it keep on rolling. And that that was how he promoted the album. Yeah, I remember that, and everybody. Nobody understood what to make of it, but I feel like it wasn't as much of like a joke as it should have been. No, he was like dead ass, like, "Hey, please," because that was that was a strategy: put as many songs as possible and just get them streamed as much as possible. But he was dead ass thinking that if I just bastardized everybody else's formula and just did that shit two times, then I'd have to make two times the sales. <laughs> Jesus. But just to close out on, on that, because we could do that all day. Um, culture, the number one. When you look at like the track listing for this, because I have finally pulled it up. So you have Culture One with DJ Kali. It's like the tail end of like DJ's and inf- Kali's influence on like just being a powerful like influence on the music. You know, he had the whole wave of like you know major key. You know. All that inspirational bullshit he was doing for whatever reason. You go from that yeah. to t- you go from that to t shirt, which is I mean, it's t shirt. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, Jabir, I think we have to make a quick detour. I just got. I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't really listen to the last ten seconds of what you said, but you had to see what was just put in the group chat, and I feel like you should bring this up on the stream. Oh god. It's pretty it's a pretty important drop. All right. Okay. DJ put some some heat in. You only have to look at that first picture, man, that he sent. And I feel like this is something that the people need to see. Okay. So, hey, I'm gonna, I'm going to pull it up on the strings. I just looked at it, but I'm going to act like I didn't look at it. I'm going to give a good reaction <laughs> to it. Uh, yo, this is <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> it's going to get the due justice it deserves. I I, I promise. This this stream I get flagged for doing so, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I got to do. Oh my, yo, I don't know how. I it, don't understand. The worst part of it is like it's slowly loading, and it only adds to <laughs> the the, <laughs> the hypertension I'm getting from this this situation. Oh man, I don't even know what the worst part is. The fact that you know. The main man, you know, that everyone's been thinking about, the guy that circled followed it, or the fact that Lil B followed it. I don't know what's the bigger deal here. I think Lil B probably followed them because they followed Lil B. But, I mean, like, I don't think there's any excuse for the other guy. So, what, that what came up yet. What, what we do have here, it has finally loaded. What we have here is uh, Flesh Jack, which is apparently... The number one gay sex toy in the world with uh, 42.4 thousand followers. And uh, <laughs> their their first tweet is, 
I believe a guy with his uh, definitely naked people, but one guy with his crotch to the back of another guy's head, and a Freddie Mercury looking guy holding what appears to be the flesh jack, and this profile, which is very evidently of a tenured real profile, been since January two thousand nine. Is being followed by the former president of the United States, uh, <laughs> Barack Obama, <laughs> and our, our former <laughs> president of the of the free world. You know, supposedly straight man, wife, <laughs> and two children is, of course, a fan, a follower of the product known as the Flesh Jack. Uh, That's really all we had to say. I feel like there's no more speculation required. I mean, the, the facts are there. All right? Everything that we need to know is now known. Like, it all comes together now. I'll give... I'll give Mr. Barack this this caveat. He does follow 616,000 people. I'm going to assume that at some point, he was just, like, flipping through, and he saw, like, maybe, like, fucking Felicia from Friday. And, it, you know, he meant to follow her, but when he typed in F, he scrolled down too far, and, like, Flapjack was, like, right under Felicia. I, I can't look at anything else. That That's inexcusable, and, uh, honestly, a worse transgression than anything that Trump has done so far in office. Yeah, honestly, I feel like it's making a lot of people, it's gonna make a lot of people rethink how they see it but i think that the bigger thing is what was our main man cj doing looking at flesh jack i i think cj saw the shit that we dropped or at least that i dropped in the chat and he was like how do i top that screenshot with another <laughs> screenshot and, <laughs> and he went fishing i that's all the thing i could think of i don't know how else that would come into cj's position i don't know who who else Either either CJ, either it was CJ who looked it up, or it's one of CJ's mans that he'd be caught into question. Because I don't know how anybody without looking at the profile would find that out. Yeah, I mean, maybe if it came up on the side and it said followed by Barack Obama. Maybe, but I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> we should move on to a topic after after that. <laughs> so what what are we thinking? Are we thinking about what are we thinking, Javier? It's on the list. Alright, so we went we went from brief music to, to brief presidency. Uh I think I think sports is always a good a good third leg to introduce uh, to the the women's. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, we do have a completely 100% female audience, so I feel like it's best to cater to their interests. So, of course, let's do about, you know, a couple dozen minutes of NBA bullshitting. So, now, All-Star Game is coming up. And there's a lot of things that we can say about that. But I feel like the biggest news at the meatiest is probably Anthony Davis requesting a trade. Because it's something that people have been speculating for a few weeks now. Not even a few weeks. A few months, years. Everybody's been seeing this coming. And people thought that he was either going to you know, sign an extension or just wait until the contract's up. But that motherfucker was like, no, bitch. This shit ends now. The madness must stop. Because honestly... You can't do anything but pity the guy for his situation in New Orleans. Like, goddamn, it was he was literally in the playoffs like one or two years out of like the eight years he's been in the league. I remember there was this one point. Um, it may have been the beginning of last year where like he. He had like 150 points like the first three games, and they lost two of those games. And it was it was another point where um, it was last year's playoffs against Golden State. You know they had beaten Portland, who it's not even a real like sports team. But um, 
they had, you know, got past Portland, and they were, so you you look at Golden State last year. They were like pretty weak, and you know Steph gotten hurt. I think KD was um, pretty much just like chucking shit up. You know, Draymond's hairline's getting pushed back another couple of inches, and uh, yeah. you know Clay was smoking like GMO weed. You know, and yeah, the wrong kind <laughs> that hard <card> booth. <laughs> Fucking hard. <card. laughs> Combined with all of those those um those issues, you know, they looked pretty weak. And we were thinking, like, all right, the Pelicans, they can steal at least, like, two, may, maybe two games. Yeah. But I think it had come down to, and I'll make sure to, like, look this up just to be further, you know, accurate about it. They had Rondo on, 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 um, I think it was Quinn Cook, some, some bum motherfucker. And then they had Drew Holiday on KD. Like that was that was her go to matchup. Wait, 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 what? They yeah, had Drew Holiday on Kevin Durant. They they don't have. I don't know if they if it's still a situation. But at that point, they didn't have like an actual small forward. And Drew Holiday had like really long arms, so they just like assumed that he could contest. <laughs> Jesus. And I feel like that was like the breaking point for Katie. Like I'm not for not for eighty. He's probably just thinking to himself, like, okay, if KD pulls up one more time and fucking baby dicks this motherfucker Drew Holiday in his ugly ass beetle face, I'm leaving. <laughs> and naturally they lost in like five games and it was it it, it couldn't have been any better for him because they they, yeah, they no, presu- there, there was really nothing else to be done. I mean New Orleans is just one of those teams that goes – their rotation, you know, some teams you say they go eight men deep and some teams go, like, ten men deep. Like, the fucking Pelicans that year, they went four men deep. <laughs> like, honestly, they'd be better off, like, coming in with four dudes and having everyone else just call the day off because it's about as good as it got. Like, you got dudes like fucking Solomon Hill and Etwan Moore running in as your wings. And you expect me to fucking, like, respect y'all against the Warriors? And like I said, this is no step they had in that fucker. Like, they were going against Quinn Cook. Uh, They didn't have Boogie back then. So this was like Kayvon Looney, like, running up behind, behind Zaza. And... They, like Jordan Bell. Yeah, Jordan Bell is like starting like power four or some shit like that. And they stole they stole one game at home and then lost the next game <laughs> at home by 20, 26. So I mean yeah. when you think about when you think about New Orleans, I don't know. Have you been in New Orleans? I have been in New Orleans. It it stinks quite a bit, but it's a lot of it's a lot of culture to it being such a smelly place, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, it's just one of those places where it just sucks all around, but then they're like, you know what, we gotta make something, like, subjective to be, like, the only reason people would come here, and they're like, all right, you know what, and then they decided that they had culture, and that's pretty much all they got, and it got them a basketball team, which I guess they should be happy about. And, I mean, at this point, man, I think, all right, so, like, if you go to one of the games, it never sells out, like, even their best days. And if you, like, look at their fans, their fans, like, rock Saints jerseys until, like, the basketball games. That gives you, like, <laughs> an indication of how, of how much they give a shit about that team. I don't think they sell Pelicans jerseys. Like, I don't think I've seen one on anybody yet. If they do, it's, like, a probably, like, one of those, like, terrible towels from the Steelers. But, like, it's not it's not meant to be a towel that people just use to wipe their ass with, you know? <laughs> I can imagine them coming in with like a Drew Brees or like fucking like Darren Sharper jersey. And then they're just like taking these $80 terrible towels that are actually like fucking like, I don't even know, New New Orleans like Hornet Chris Paul jerseys and like swinging them around. Just like the back, like the back right pocket of your, of your uh, no. true religions. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Of course. Now, what do you think? They got true religion money in New Orleans? No they, way. 
you know, I'm, I'm going to let you know because I am a former tenured uh, True Religion employee. They actually do have a True Religion store on Bourbon Street. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets lost behind, you know, the um, the the TJ Maxx and the, uh, the Target to either side. But, you know. People... Not to mention the rampant debauchery and drunkenness you can witness on Bourbon Street in any given day. See. Right. I think I think it's problematic when like your only redeemable value is just having sloppy bitches suck each other titties in the middle of the street. But at the same time, it's kind of idealistic. I feel like. Yeah, it's just something to show you like about what America could be, and I find that to be pretty inspiring. But anyways, back to Anthony Davis. <laughs> uh, where do you think he's going? What do you what what's on your mind? All right, so this has pretty much been the only basketball story I've followed for about a week now. And uh based on my, my, my sources, as Chris Broussard would say, uh I really feel like it's either and it, this is mainly because like Rich Paul, you know, LeBron slash Anthony Davis's agent is the pushing this. It seems to me that either they deal him now and it's like a ninety nine percent chance to the Lakers. Or they wait till the summer, and it's like a 1% chance it's to the Lakers. Hmm. So with those odds, it's pretty much like they force AD to come out basically be like, hey, uh, anywhere I go to, I'm going to stay there for like a half a year, and then I'm getting the fuck out of there to go back to LA anyway. So I think the, the cards seem to be in, in LeBron's hand. Not even the Lakers' hand, but in LeBron's hand. To, to get my boy AD. That's uh, so brutal, though. It, it's like. tough because they like, as I said, I've been to a couple of those games and pretty much, like Chris Paul was like the heart of the city, right? You know, he brought in, like the first playoffs. Uh, was their best player of all time before Anthony Davis. But like, it's like you can't see it, but it's like here, it's like Peter Dinklage. And then, like, Anthony Davis' love in the city is, like, fucking the great Kali to put in the reference. Jeez. Jesus. So, I I think that, I think that, I think the Pelicans are going to handle it right, where, like, they're going to let him, like, pretty much, whoever he wants to go to, they'll get, like, the first pick of the litter. But, like, I just don't see any way that they can afford to, like, Keep that kind of because they're gonna start tanking. Obviously, you know they can't not tank at that point. But um, even if you want to tank, you don't have like a guy that like pretty much quit on the team, basically just hanging around. You know that's 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 just yeah. bad moves. You know. Yeah. So the way I see it is, I think the trade deadline is. Someone said the like February seventh. I think. Um, yeah, it's like All Star Weekend, pretty much. I mean, yeah, I always figured because I remember um, Boogie got traded, like, on like at the All Star game. Oh yeah, he did. Did I forgot about that? He like heard from somebody while he was like practicing and shit like that. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. That shit was crazy. Yeah, that that also like leads me to believe that New Orleans. It's probably going to get like fleeced to some degree by the LA because I don't think, well, I don't think like Magic and Rob Palinka are like the smartest uh, franchise runners. I just think like they have so many cars in their hands right now, even though the, the Lakers, the young Lakers look like like dog shit in the past couple of like weeks. I I just don't think that like, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, pause for one second. All right. All right, so my screen flashes real quick. You know, you get a notification on iPhone. You know, the master race, and this, yeah, this is from Woj, who is like the king of like breaking news and shit like that, right? Uh huh. So Bleach Report says the Pels don't want to deal with LA. <laughs> Just straight up. Just straight up, the Pels have no interest in trading LA- AD to the Lakers right now. Jesus. All right, so forget every single word I just said uh, for the past ten minutes. If I still think the Lakers are gonna like get their way into this discussion because you know AD probably wants to play for Los Angeles, 
But if they don't go to the Lakers, because I mean that's the that's the that's the most interesting you know narrative to this story is if not the Lakers and who. I heard that the Knicks are thinking about giving like pretty much they have like the on pace with like the number one pick, which would be Zion. I heard they want to trade the number one pick, KP, and maybe like I don't know, Tim Hardaway. I don't know to to give to um for AD straight up. That could be interesting. Man, I want to say that how much better is Anthony Davis as an asset to your franchise than Chris Stapps? Like, really, how much better? I feel like Chris Stapps is, based on what we last seen, when he was, like, doing, like, balling his ass up before he broke his shit last year, he had them, if I remember correctly, like, in the... Sixth or seventh seed, um, they had even less time than they do now because they didn't have Tim Hart. They might, I don't think they had Tim Hardaway. And they didn't he have did, Kevin. but Tim Hardaway was nothing like he is right now. Okay, okay. They didn't have Kevin Knotts or Alonzo Trier. I know they didn't have them too. Um, and they were like playoff competing. And he was given like, it wasn't like the same scoring that AD gives you, but like he's a more traditional you know, rim protector. He, right. he in my eyes is a better shooter from outside. Definitely, definitely. He's just not as strong, or as like you know, gifted athletically. Like Anthony Davis can move pr- pretty fucking good for a seven footer. Like I, w- I wouldn't like want to use anything like oh he moves like a two or moves like a three or whatever. But the man can fucking move, and Chris Stapps kind of doesn't move that much. It's really the only difference. The thing about Chris Stapps is that he's like seven foot, like three, mm-hmm. and he's got like the long arm of of like God <laughs> on each shoulder. So that's the really thing. Bad. That's I don't mean to rush you, but like that's the that's the thing that I come to is that like Anthony Davis is athletically just you know the only problem with that is that even though he's athletically like just you know. No homo, but chisel out here. Um, he he gets hurt too, like pretty like pretty much like every year he goes down for like twenty games or something like that, you know. Yeah. So if if it was me, and you could get like, because if they they have to obviously include KP, if they want Anthony Davis. I think you gotta you gotta think about the two at least in like comparable trade, comparable value, you know, to the franchise. If you have to do that. And if you're in New York and you can do that and just give up that number one pick, I I feel like you'd be okay with that. As long as you can still keep, you know, Trier, um, Harder, well, hard, I mean, there's, there's, there, man, there's no, they shouldn't accept that. They really shouldn't. I mean, Chris Stapps is the only thing that they've had to resemble a franchise player since, like, Carmelo was good. And that was like 2011, 2012. So I mean, like, I don't know. They'd be they'd be selling the marketability of the team if they just traded one stretch four for another stretch four and then gave a little something extra up. Like, it, it's also tough because Chris Stapps is like, he's like actually put like the the culture on his back a little bit. Like he's tried to be an actual like persona for New York, you know. Yeah. AD, he's not very, like, marketable. Like, even though he's, like, a decent person, he's not very, like, interesting, you know? Yeah, I mean, literally the only thing that was interesting about him was the fact he had an Uno brow. And that shit was only interesting, like, the first or second season he was here. And then now he's just some dude. Like, nobody gives a fuck. He doesn't, like, win games either. That's the thing about it. Like, when you think about the hype he gets... If you compare him to like almost any other like okay let's let's go down the list to like comparable youth and like value, Giannis he wins games, uh Kawhi he wins games, Harden wins Russ games. Russ wins games. Even even Russ before uh Paul George came he took a terrible ass team and averaged a triple double every fucking night to he take- brought him to like a six seed or some shit like on his own like the next best player on that fucking team was like Steven Adams and then below him was like Andre Roberson 
Like the shit was fucking awful. And he did it. Um I'd even say that fucking D'Angelo Russell is winning more games for his team, putting the team on his back than Anthony Davis has been. I mean, straight up. I mean, I I follow this and I know. It's impressive because I think they've won like what two or three games since Dan Whitty went down. Wait, what? They've... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They have. They've won two games since uh, Dan Whitty went down, including the one that he was he went down in. And they have a pretty easy schedule until Levert gets back next month. So, I think you can make the argument that like Anthony Davis is like the best underachiever in the league right now, probably. Oh, definitely. So I mean, he's definitely underachieving, but he's also definitely like, you know, he's definitely a great player. I mean, just doesn't win games. It's it's tough because. He has like the makeup of like a number two option, even though he's like has a talent of a number one. While KP probably has the makeup of of both, but it's just that that the reason why I think the only, the only reason why I even suggest that you trade him was because that injury for his frame could be like, you know, damning really. Yeah. But if that if that isn't the case and he does if he can come back like Let's say eighty percent of what he was last year. You, I think, ideally, you'd take him off the table, and you'd give them, let's say, a number one pick, Kevin Knox. You got to trade a Tim big, Hardaway. Yeah, Tim Hardaway. You know that makes sense. And then I don't know what bigs they have, but you got you know try to fit one young center in there just to make you know the the positions meet. Yeah, they have. Uh, I think they have like a, a Hernan Gomez brother in there. I th- Still, <laughs> throw him in. The most get thrown around a lot. The most talented Hispanics in basketball history. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, so let's. Oh, uh, do you have anything else, Dad? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So I was thinking about moving into the next topic. Mm-hmm. So for a very brief moment, because nobody really gives a fuck about the NFL, what do you think the result of this game is gonna be? coming up this little this little exhibition game coming on this sunday all right so this this keeps me the most interested in like because you know they always run pretty much the same narratives and stuff it's just a different team you know it's brady against some motherfuckers looking for the throne you know yeah so the best the best interest i get out of this is how do they market this long term because i was thinking about the eagles I don't think they let the Eagles win, or let's let's say that it's all controlled. You know, let's just say that for topic of discussion. I don't think they let the Eagles win to like have the Eagles become like the premier franchise of the NFL. You know, it's it's fucking Philadelphia, right? Yeah, fuck that shit. I think they just gave them like a you know because they slowly take off like pretty much every team that like hasn't won in a while. It just hasn't won. Period. You know, they gave Baltimore one back in twenty eleven. Um. Yeah, but that's not really, that's not really all that true though. I mean, like, well, Baltimore got one back in twenty eleven. They also got one like a decade before that. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a very large jump between championships. Like the Rams won; they were at least in one in like two thousand and one or something. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess. I guess when you think about it. For the Eagles, I really don't understand the narrative behind why the Eagles won. I, I guess they just had a good ass team. They won. I guess that's that's only I can explain it with. But um, the NFC kind of like revolves like good ass teams pretty much every once in a while. I like guess you went from uh, let's see, who did you have before Carolina? You had um, the Forty uh, Niners. You had the Forty Niners. Then before you had like the Packers, and it kind of just like floats back in and out, you know. Yeah, I think you look at the Rams. Look at that market. You know, the Rams, like, L.A. is probably the most casual fan base market when it comes to, like, not basketball and pretty much not basketball. Easily. Easily. No one really gives a fuck about anything except the Lakers. So it, it's one of those things where, like, they're probably trying to make money back from new stadiums, trying to, like, 
maybe give the Chargers an assist because you know if they don't give a fuck about the Rams in L.A., they don't give a fuck about the, the uh, Chargers in L.A. You know. Yeah, no. I mean, like, I remember when the uh, fucking Rams first showed up there, and then, like, literally nobody would show up to the games. Like, you remember seeing those videos of, like, the stadium on opening day, and it was, like, ten people? Yeah, it was pretty empty. I remember that. Yeah, that shit was crazy, but, I mean, after this, I mean, they have, they have a reason to live, you know, their management. I think I think this allows them, with... Oakland basically being forced out at this point, uh, being a couple, like as soon as they can find someone who wants Oakland's dirty ass, they're going to push him out of uh, an entire California, I'm pretty sure. Oh, absolutely. I'm pretty sure that Las Vegas deal is still a lock, though. That I mean, that'd be good for just because, like, you got a greasy fan base in the greasy market. It makes, it makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of cohesion going on there. So... But, um... Uh, just to close out on my my end of it, um, I think they'll give the Rams the, the the win. I feel like the only, the only way I can see them not doing it is if it's like an all time class type ending where like let's say the Rams scoring like score a touchdown with like forty seconds left, they kick the bitch down the down the um you know down the field, and whoever they have returning it takes up like the fifty. Brady gets a game winning touchdown. And it's like they were so close that maybe they could make a run, you know, going for it after Brady's gone type of thing, you know? Yeah. What are your thoughts about it? I think that the Rams are gonna win. And it's gonna be um it's gonna be one of those situations where the Rams are up by more than a field goal, but less than a touchdown at the end of the game, and then the Patriots gonna have a game winning drive, but they're not gonna win the game. And then that's pretty much how it's gonna go. Because honestly, the, these Rams, they they need some, they need something, you know. These bunch of, they're like the heartbreak kids out here, you know. They're having fun, winning games with the young-ass head coach that looks like, you know, he, he likes to drink plastic bottle vodka out back <laughs> of the fucking, you know, bowling alley. And, uh, you know, just a bunch of whiffer snappers against the old heads. And I think that, you know... I think that Big G up there is going to let them have this one. And maybe it'll be like I said, but maybe it'll be something really nice, like a game-winning field goal as time expires. But it's going to be it's going to be good. You know, it's not going to be as tragic or as disgusting as like when the Broncos got destroyed by the Seahawks or like when the <laughs> Panthers got destroyed by the Broncos. All right, calm down. <laughs> that was heartbreaking, Javier. You know that. That was a heartbreaking game. That that was my that's like my reason that why I feel like you can't just have a team get their ass beat and like that's just it for their narrative. But I'm pretty sure that's it for Carolina. They're done now. <laughs> yeah, that was literally the end of their franchise. Like everything was looking up. That that happened and everyone just like everyone just quit. Everyone was just done. They just let fucking Cam get beat the fucking like to a goddamn vegetable and it's like oh okay well hey let's keep it moving. Yeah, man, we didn't even want this Super Bowl. Y'all can have it. I I like I like the way you're putting it, just cause like I feel like you can only use Brady as a marketing tool so long, and they're literally rehashing the no one fucking respects Brady like narrative that they've been using for like, the past like literally four years now. Yeah, I mean the people who are gonna respect him currently do, and the people who don't never will. So. That's yeah, that's just how it is. I don't. I think it was a good like just using like WWE terms. It was like a good draw back in like the um that last uh what was it the um Seahawks last Seahawks Patriots matchup. But oh, after, yeah, yeah. That was that was a classic. You had this Seahawks look like the God Dynasty coming up, and then you had Brady. I mean, basically get lucky that Russell Wilson is goddamn retarded. I don't know. But uh, I think I think the best thing they could do, like if I was if I was Roger Goodell, I was like, F- let's look at these ratings one more time, and let's say how do we boost this shit up next season? Because you know next season of the NBA is gonna be like you're gonna have Zion, you're gonna have Zion, and you're gonna have probably Zion. So I don't think you really can compete with that unless you got new blood running the damn NFL. You know? Yeah, exactly. 
No, this new NBA season is going to have me bussing. Because, I mean, I know the Nets going to be popping and it's going to be slamming. All three of those things. But, um, yeah, with, with those Super Bowl takes, uh, we both think the Rams are going to win. The, uh, the heartbreak kids are gonna they're gonna beat old man Brady and you know Emperor Palpatine <laughs> and head coach of the other team and yeah so after that what do you want to talk about you want to talk about these bitches or like okay you know, we 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 did discuss this I know that I'm the advertisers like pretty much like topicless uh, I already had the title thought out but. This title, this this topic right here, we did talk about. And I really like it. Uh, the government shutdown. What what is your opinion on the government shutdown, Hudson? All right, so I got a little bit of something I've been thinking about. All right, so food for thought. There's somebody out there that stands to greatly benefit from the shutdown because honestly, nobody benefits except for this one group that I can think of. Because like tax returns are gonna take some time. Me personally, you know, my money affected as a soldier, but like a lot of the people I work with that are civilians aren't getting paid, so we can't do our job. Being a bit of a pain in the ass, but, you know, we're living. It's all right. But there is one group that benefits from government services and employees not coming to work because they're not getting paid. And that, of course, are thoughts. You see, <laughs> thoughts frequently have something known as premium snapchats and this honestly exists for beta males to spend their hard work like hard work dollars from working at fucking square enix and bullshit like that <laughs> to, to like give to them you know their 20 dollars a month or whatever just to see you know some thong pics on their stories and that's cool and all you can do that. But there is one thing that I stand for, which is financial responsibility, especially when it comes to taxation. And they stand to gain because they cannot be taxed as long as the IRS is not functioning. You see, not only do they stand to gain, but I believe they started this shit. And that's that's word word to God. I believe that they are the prime engineers behind all of this shit and they need to be stopped because the thoughts are becoming way too powerful way too numerous if they're able to you know instate an entire government shutdown just so their premium snapchats don't get audited all right i i need detectives i need the invest i need investigation on this because it's something that's been weighing on my mind heavy i haven't slept in like four days because of this shit yeah, I, I this is this is the reason that I had to make this stream happen was for that particular topic. What are your thoughts, Javier? All right, so uh, <laughs> so for people who um who don't get like the whole IRS like Snapchat print correlation, so I think Hudson did describe it pretty well. Um, but basically, like let, let's put it like this. If you're selling pussy that can't be taxed, you, you're getting shut the fuck down. Or you're supposed to. You're supposed to have. And that that was a common theme in uh in late December that people actually were getting like they had like a whole form and everything about it on Twitter. That's true. No, that was a real thing. And I'm glad that people realized it. I've been you know, the people listened to me. I knew. So yeah, we're at we're at this point where um and it got to such a like a degree where like even like so they have like this thing that's called um OnlyFans, which has been like a popular site where people basically like so I think it's so like it's basically like Snapchat premium, but it's like a porn site, you know, behind a paywall. But you can only assess the information through a paywall. So what people were doing were like making like they DM these for all intents and purposes porn stars. Um and they would like all you need to do is like prove that this person was selling, let's say, videos or this or that off the record, and they had to be enough information to send to the IRS. And 
you would actually get like I saw like screenshots of people getting audited, like actual porn stars being audited. Absolutely, I saw them too. That shit was crazy, you know. Justice was being fucking served, and you know what? Guess when those screenshots stopped happening? When the fucking shutdown happened? Can't shit get done? And these fucking thoughts, they're running amok. You know, you call them porn stars, and I feel like it's a lot of credit. I feel like it's a lot of undue credit because, you know, anybody, can't everybody be walking around calling themselves a porn star, all right? That takes, that takes work, that takes dedication, and that takes experience and expertise. And that's not what these bitches have. They literally have it, an iPhone 5C camera <laughs> in, in a bathroom mirror. And, like, you know, some Victoria's Secret fucking, like, lace pajamas. And that's about it. And Oh, yeah. And they also have their bathroom counter that they'll sit on to pretend they have an ass. Oh, that, that, that's the angles that got to work. They got to work the... Just they have they a know little, the angles. A little bit of a, a cheek there to, to get the um the beta cucks, as they're called, the, the incels. Honestly, like... Those kinds of guys will pro will eat up pretty much anything without question. You know they don't look, they don't look at the little things, and they don't they 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 don't realize that these bitches are literally just as ugly as they are. I think I think we could like I I respect this topic and I I do want to continue it, but I think you could like entail it into a larger issue where basically sub fours. Have been financially endowed, simply and empowered. because empowered simply because of a camera. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Because the thing about it is that these cameras are getting better and better. And you know, back in the days of like the five and stuff, the camera was good, but it wasn't too good. And now it is too good to where you know these sub fives and sixes are really starting to get scared. But luckily, you know, there's face tuner and there's, uh, you know, all kinds of well-known angles that can conceal all kinds of things. And the thing about it is, is that girls care a lot about like how they look when it comes to pictures and stuff. Because they know that if a single bad picture comes out of them, like over, you know, their own social media groups and chains, then it'll invalidate all the good they took. But the thing about dudes, so these, you know, these incels and like stuff like that, they might not be completely unattractive guys, but they have no idea how to take a picture of themselves, how to present themselves in a marketable fashion. Like these females seem to be built in knowing. So honestly, you know, the, the only difference between a four and four and a half guy and a four and a half female is that the four and a half female believes that they're an eight and then the four and a half guy believes they're a fucking two because they can't get any pussy. And, that, and that's, that's pretty much the world that we're living in. That's very true. And I think the the diff another difference that you can add on top of that is that the the key to to unlocking all the secrets of 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 women basically these days uh, I wouldn't even call them women at this point uh, girls that have a very good body I guess I could just you know they're not they're not even like mentally women they're just retarded mentally yeah but the, <clears throat> the key to unlocking this is basically conversing with them and the problem with that is that you have to like you have to like be able to look past or con just get past the wall of retardation that comes out of some of their mouths. And the only person yeah. who could do that is A, a female, because no male understand that shit, uh, or even like care about what they're saying enough to like, look past the body. It has to be a woman that's less attractive, because obviously an equally attractive woman doesn't care to hear the secrets of entrancing weak men, because they already got it themselves, you know? Yeah. If if there was a man and not a there's there's gay men that, that know these secrets, but obviously that's useless to, to us. Yeah, they they won't give those those secrets to us, all right? 
Like you can, that might be a game that I'll try to play one day, but it's a very dangerous game. You know, any game where the worst case scenario is a dick up your ass. <laughs> it's not a game you want to play very much, my friend. It's like when they had like those like Snapchat like pictures where like it'd be like you pick a fruit, like I'll tell you how I feel about you in secrecy or some shit like that. <laughs> they would yeah. tell they tell the gay men, but they wouldn't tell us, even though it, you know it'd be about you, you know. Absolutely. But yeah, what what I was trying to like say was that like if there was one man like take one for the team and like figure out this, 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 this about how to flip women's incessant self delusion that that could help us develop like a strategy and once you have that strategy developed you just you just flip it on them you just break the brains basically honestly to me i mean you and i we've talked to a lot of girls in our time like online stuff and I think that you learn something different every time. I really do. You get a little bit better every time. The only problem is that as you're getting better, so are they. Like, and they're probably better than you at your current age. Like, if I, if like, you know, twenty year old Hudson would like with everything that I know, talking to girls on, you know, this mind got zapped back into like fifteen year old Hudson. I'd be fucking whooping ass. But that's not really how it works. Like, I don't know. The keys the keys are there, and some dudes have, but they get more elusive as time goes on. That's the one thing I'd like to I'd like to expound on is just how like there's like a certain age um between between the genders where we go one way and like either we know the game that they know or we just don't and we just don't figure it out for years and they go like the other route where like they gain pretty much all knowledge of how to play the opposite gender perfectly you know yeah it it, it is like that for many of them and I, i'd say 15 it sounds about right because it's about in high school where you start you start learning the differences in the world you know yeah, yeah, because you know, up to that point, you kind of just feel like you're just gonna get what you deserve, and it's gonna be handed to you. Like you're gonna get, you know, you go to high school, go to freshman year, and you're gonna get a girlfriend that looks about as good as you do, and you're gonna be happy, and you're gonna get your pee pee sucked and all that. But the world doesn't really work like that, and that's something that you learn during freshman and sophomore year of high school, more likely than not. It's tough because you you look at as you already mentioned like the hindsight part of it, it you can even like pass a game on to like let's say you had like a little brother that's like about fifteen sixteen. Cause I'll say even the game they're going through now is different than the game that we went through because these women are like all in power with the Twitter, you know. Yeah, it's a little bit different because when I was like fifteen sixteen ish, let's say they it was like a it was a backdrop for like their the, the the woman they wanted to be, but they said to exist in the real existential world, and they said to be a basic bitch in the real world, you know? Yeah. But now it's like, they can basically become an entirely different person, and you have to like also respect that person in real life to some degree, you know? Yeah. No, that's ridiculous. But it's true. I think the best thing we could pass on to the the next, you know, the next people, the next, the next army of boys is just, you may have to like completely either, you got to like disconnect from social media when you're talking about relationships, you know, you just got to, you got to turn it off pretty much. Yeah. That's the thing. Because any relationship that I've ever had, the thing about it is that if it was limited completely to physical interaction and then like social media played a 10 to 15 percent role it would be so much better because frankly the way that social media goes it is too much all the time and females are a lot more apt 
to that than like guys are because guys like i don't know you just get bored of that after a while but they still want to you know message 24 7 all the time that's kind of tough to deal with and i've experienced it every relationship i've ever been in and that, that's how i feel too there's like moments where like it's, it's kind of like if you're doing anything creative or artistic some shit like that conversing with women is almost the same where like you have moments where, like, you're flowing mentally. Like, you got the whole world down packed. You're free-flowing, Basquiat-type shit. And then yeah. you got, like, moments, more often than not, where, like, you just don't want to even think about the fucking subject at hand, you know? Yeah. Fucking, um... Uh, yeah, that's how it can be sometimes. Um... I'm about to say something. I fucking forget what. But yeah, it, in in this modern age, it is pretty tough to talk to these hoes. But I remember you had a story that you were telling me about a girl that you were talking to that you weren't too into. You want to elaborate? Oh god, this is this is a good segue. All right, so I'm gonna give y'all a prime example, and I'll try to give this in the best the best retelling I can possibly give it because it is it's a pretty one on one story. You got to hear it, you got to feel it, you know. Yeah. So we have, and this made us like a hypocrite. I go on Bumble looking for, you know, maybe a good relationship, maybe a good something else, you know, but a good something, you know. Yeah. So after a bit of admittedly just random flicking through about 10 or so females, you know, just to burn the minutes off and go on to my next class. I get a match in about, let's say, an hour later or so, right? And this is about, I would say, a early Thursday where I matched with this female. And right. she's she, she's talking to me about, you know, her bio says she's looking for a a, a, a king, you know, someone to... <laughs> <laughs> someone to make... Someone she can love and respect, you know? Okay. So I'm 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 talking to her, you know, and well, she says, "Hey, first, because you know that's chivalry and that's how Bumble works." Mm-hmm. And after, you know, I see it's it's weird with, with women on on online, you know, because the way we talk is a bit abrasive, but you don't always know if you can like talk to a female like that, you know. Yeah. So we're sitting here talking about school, which is. Usually a dead end with, with women online, even though you meet them at school and it's kind of like, you know, what the fuck? But hey, um, she brings up her 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 year. She says she's a senior. And, you know, that gives me a go to think about, well, if I play this one way, she's going to be gone. So if I fuck up, you know, it's it's basically just a half court shot in the, the half, you know? Yeah. So after, after you know, bullshit for about... 30 minutes of convo, and so did I, I say, so did you come to Bumble for anything particular? She says, yep, looking for my king. Uh, I send two eye emojis, and I say, you found him yet? Just to, you know, test the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then, at that point, I was like, because I went to sleep on after that, and I was like, you know, it's time for me to get a nap in. Of and, course. Yeah, so I get the number, and, um, I'm just going through my text log right now so I can be as one to one as possible, of course. And I don't I don't wanna let's let's call her let's call her Tracy. We'll go with that. That's a okay. good enough number. Uh name to it. And as soon as I got her number, this is like let's say Thursday night. Um she as I as I told Hudson, she's probably like the least good testers. I've ever seen in my natural born life. Like she no, is wait. least good. What? She's one of the least good testers. Well, one, one of the worst testers I've ever talked about. Let's 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 just say that. Oh, okay, that was really bad on tests. Oh yeah, okay. just just awful at at testing. Okay. So she's like sending me like, yo, like I'm talking like a hundred messages. And what? they're all. <laughs> uh, I, fuck, <laughs> I, 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 hey, I shit you not. Before we even got to the part where, like, I first meet her in real life, because this is all like, this is two days I'm talking about right now at this point. 
she sent me a hundred messages and not one has been of interest. So I go in to go watch a movie at uh, Langdon Hall. Shout out if you go to Auburn, you know where Langdon Hall is at. Especially a damn shitty ass movie theater. And I go to watch this movie. And it's it's like the fucking you know that movie where like the Muppets were like they had like a damn detective that was a Muppet and they had like a crime scene and shit like that. Oh, you're talking about the fucking Happy Time Murders or something. Yeah, the Happy Time Murders. It was a... Uh, that that oh. shit sucked. Yeah, it was one of the worst movies I've seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, was a, I was embarrassed to be a human being because I knew human beings made it. Like, uh. And it had Melissa McCarthy too, so it was like, it was even double uh. worse. Ugh. So, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a little bit stiffy in the, the, the Jimmy. So I, I'm, um, I tell her to come over, you know, I didn't, I told her to come over to the movie then because, you know, I'm trying to see what she's doing, you know, but she said, I just mm-hmm. got off of, said, I just got off of work. I come over there and like, okay, cool. She sits a row behind me and I was like, like what the <laughs> fuck? So, so I, like, what the f- So I tell her, hey, get your ass over here and sit in this chair. And she, she eventually gets over there and at this point, like, <laughs> so I, um, <laughs> So I was like, you know, we're just talking bullshit, and, and I was hugged up with a little bit towards the end. Um, and here, here's a here's a secret. I, you know, don't take this how you want to take it. This is gonna sound mm-hmm. personal as shit. I I'm wearing sweatpants at this point, right? You know, I'm wearing sweatpants, about to leave out. I go for okay. the hug. I go intentionally stiffy on purpose. Boss I, move. I give her the Boss hug. Move. She's five foot. I'm about five foot ten. She notices. She looks at me, and then she just says, "I'll see you later." And then that's it. <laughs> I had to tell her the process, basically, because this this woman was giving me nothing, you know. Yeah. So I test her when I get back to the bed, and you know, I basically say, "I'm trying to roll up under the sheets, you know, and get like you," because she was warm as shit. Mm. And then she says, you know, not like me. I need to get like you. So I was like, send her like a, a text of like me in the bed, you know, not not uncovered, you know. I, I'm still trying to, you know, mm. say some of the goods, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. Can't give them all of what they want. That's respectable. So I'm like, you know, this Thursday, and I'm like, I honest to God, hand of God, I could get on this woman tomorrow if I wanted to, and it's it's amazing. So like we. I, I get out of school. She had um, delivered me some headphones from the uh, library or whatever the fuck it was. So I knew she was she was down for the boy. So mm-hmm. I tested. She said, I think she's getting off. She works at the bookstore. I tell her, like, you know, hey, if you're trying to chill whenever you get off, I'm here. She walks over. I wasn't going to pick her up, but she walks over there. Um, and she gets there. And, like, at first, we're just, like, watching Netflix. And, you know... <laughs> I got I got this cozy ass couch right now. I'm looking at it's about ten feet from the TV, and I'm like, you know, fuck Netflix. So, so, <laughs> so we're going to various positions at this point. Where like I'm just I go from initially like cuddling, like not cuddling, cuddling, but like hand over shoulder. And at that point, it's like basically laid down together watching the shit. But I pull out, you know. Hey, this couch too small for both of us. So then I at this point, this this bitch is hot as like not hot as hell in like the sense of attractiveness, but this bitch is like hot as no. shit. So like I'm like, hey Think she was ugly? No, like, I mean like she's probably in the in the face, it wasn't that, but the body was like it was it was solid, you know. That's what I was going for. Okay. Often. okay. All right. But like I see you. body wise, she's warm as shit. And she said I was like too cold, like my hands are too cold to be hugged up with the so I put my hands, you know, in the pants, and I'm like, well, you know, I could be warm in the bed if you're trying to go out there. So, you know, long story short, you know, I, I make the move, and mm-hmm. after that, after what was done is done, I go take her back to a crib because she didn't have a whip, you know, on her at that moment for whatever reason, you know. That's, I guess, people don't have cars or some shit like that. I don't know, you know, maybe she had like a horse character, or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. So I take her back to her house which is like in the damn boonies 
And and, and I swear to God, I dropped it off. She told me to test test on all that shit. I I don't really feel like it, but you know, I say good night, you know, shit like that. And, <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is where it really gets meaty. Yeah, it, it does. Lose interest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is it is a little bit like women watching this. Don't think I'm an evil motherfucker, but if you just just a lesson, if you like test your man, I'm not trying to like cock block your man, but if you test your man after y'all finish making moves happen and he don't really feel like testing that much, you know, play play um play ten yards off the receiver. Let's just say that. You know, give him a little bit of yeah. of bumping. Yeah, give him some room, you know, just assume he's running a streak or something. Yeah, just but go. Reality, just give that motherfucker some space. He's probably thinking about some deep ass shit while listening to like Miguel or something. So I mean um, just so, chill out, take a nap, listen don't listen to Ariana Grande, but listen to somebody a little bit more man positive. Yeah, and listen to somebody that's some bass in their voice and some titties on the chest, you know? Yeah. So we're going from um so she told me good night after that. This was like Friday at eleven. And you know, your boy, I wake up at least if I ain't waking up after twelve on a Saturday, then you know, I'm I'm fucking up somewhere. So she said, she says he had a message at twelve forty five, you know, hey, I sent a message back at two PM, like, you know, what's up? You know. Yeah. <laughs> and she responds with, I'm outside blank gas station on the corner of area that's like literally like seven minutes away from me and she says i wait for the rain to come down and calm down a little bit <laughs> so okay so she's so i say yeah you know it's tough outside right now and uh <laughs> <laughs> he's just like yeah it's tough <laughs> <Isn't it bad? laughs> you, you go like this right here <laughs> i asked her why she was walking in it and she was saying, I was trying to get home. I respond with, I guess you got to do what you got to do. I hope you're close to making it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then what happened? <laughs> so, so she sends me a message like, I believe this was like 2.45. And it's like a bunch of rambling about her brother, which I didn't really care about. And then I sent her a message at 4.12 p.m. Uh... Did you ever make it back home? And she responds with, yeah, I did, period. This, this is the first <laughs> period that she used, like, the whole conversation. <laughs> See, this is the thing, you know, us kings. She said that she wanted a king, and, you know, a king is not going to do things just because, you know, he feels like he's expected to do them, you know? I don't know what she expected, you know? Does she want a king, or does she want a slave? <laughs> slave. So basically, I um, we got to a point. I, I gave her, I gave her a little bit more convo for about a day, and then she texted me uh, on Monday that that Monday at at about six p.m. and uh, she was like, you know, it's, it's kind of cold, you know, I'm trying to get something to eat. And I was like, you know, you could play eating, mini mining, mo at restaurants we got around here, and. Uh, she says I could, and then I said nothing else for the rest of the, the convo, and that that was it. <laughs> that was that. So you know, I, that's another beautiful, you know, college romance. I, I see her around from time to time, and like she just like looks at me, and she's like, she, she kind of gives like a wave, and I'm like, you know, hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey. She she also added me on Snap after that, and, like, I see her, like, from time to time read my stories, and I'm like, you know, you don't have to do this. You can delete me at any point. I wouldn't blame you at all. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she still likes you, Jabir. You know, she saw something in you. She's just, you know, a little bit intimidated by the big dick energy that you exuded by not even offering to drive her out of a <laughs> rainstorm. <laughs> like, that's a part of it. Honestly, the way that the way that women are wired these days, that probably turned her on. You know, she, she didn't know what to do about it. 
she just needs somebody like to, to give her that uh that what's the lyric uh fuck I'm trying I'm pulling trying to pull up a blue face lyric I was like I can't think of one the whole the whole oh, wait you're talking about uh ah oh, shit chase a bag don't worry about what I'm doing oh yeah that's 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 the one right there yeah. I think, I think that's a good segue. Also, I don't want to just let me encapsulate that previous whole story. Make sure in a relationship, this for men and women, the, but maybe the one time where I'll give advice to both genders. If you're going to get somebody off of Tinder, what have you, make sure somebody that you genuinely think is worth talking to longer than 10 minutes, and I guarantee you it'll be a success. At least you'll go back for for doubles after after you get what you the single Mac would say that you want the double Mac after that you know. Yeah, that's still something I haven't done. I I've still I probably talked to a lot of I've talked to a couple girls on Tinder. I fucked a few, even dated a few. But I'll tell you something. I don't think I've ever actually called any of them back for a second. I've always just broke up with them. It it's so tough because like that that um let's say allure of like talking to a woman face to face where you like you meet her like let's just say like random place like a fucking Starbucks or some shit like that that mystique is like out the window so basically yeah. the only the only let's say usual like natural interaction you have with this person is if you text them usually you text somebody. You test them until the conversation comes cold as shit. And it's just always awkward. I feel like to end those conversations like that, you know? Yeah, and then you just do something to spice it up. But the stuff you spice it up with is just going to make it more boring later. Like, you're going to go into meeting them for the first time. And you're already going to know, like, fucking what they're into and shit. Like, you already know that they want to be called, like, a dog during sex. <laughs> and they want you to grab their shoulder blades and shit like that. And I don't know, you know, it just removes a lot of the magic from it all. What what what's our runtime right now? We're at an hour and twelve minutes. All right, I think we can run with one quick topic. So, wait, you got anything in mind? Like, I think you're about to segue into Blueface. I was gonna say we can make it a little bit more general, just Blueface. Who do you think is gonna be like? It doesn't have to be necessarily a person, but maybe a description of the persona that will run 2019, like, let's say 6 9 and Blueface last year did, you know? I think Blueface is still going to keep it going. Like, <clears throat> he's just one of those sticky, like, infectious type of people that really speak to the minds of a lot of these hip-hop fans that are guys. Like... Come on, man. I mean, at the beginning of every song, he says, yeah, I. Like, that's like the shit right there. And then, like, I like how he got famous and everything. And then he came out with Bleed It. Like, and it was literally the best song he's came out with. I mean, the, man, the man's got some gas in the tank. And he could have a lot of gas in the tank. We don't even know. But if it wasn't him, then... I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of people trying to do what Six Nine was. Is like Soldier Boy. Never mind. Oh, Fuck Jesus. Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy could honestly make this his year. On, on, the, dead Lokes. on the dead Lokes. <laughs> on the dead Lokes. On the dead Lokes. Tatiana bust down. And you best respect his crip and Jabir. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I like what you don't expect the script. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're going to close out on. Uh, Hudson gave me Soldier Boy. I gave him, I guess, Blueface. Um, any any song recommendation to end out on? Okay, I have like a few. Alright, so the first one, a song that I've been playing for the past few days has been... Um, from Killy's album last year. You're familiar with Killy, right? Yeah, he had the uh, Star Stream and shit like that. Yeah, Killy had an album called Kill Streak, 
and there is a song on it called Anti Everybody. And I actually like that one a lot. There's a pretty good horn sample on there. And there's a pretty memeable hook, you know, and it's a pretty good song. Um, besides that, I'd also want to plug um, a song called What Happened by Lust Soldier. L-U-H space soldier. It's a Birmingham rapper. He came out with his debut album, and he is endorsed by Kodak Black. Oh, God. Um, I'll tell you something. As a single song type of guy or a single feature, he could be pretty solid on a song. But as an album guy, it was one of the most tiresome albums I'd ever heard. <laughs> he literally bad? had the he had the same flow in every single beat. Like it's what happened is a pretty good song because the hook I like I honestly like the song. But besides that, in the song made about Birmingham itself. Everything else sucked, but uh, we usually do three each. So I'm gonna gonna go. Oh man, I don't. All right, I'm gonna say "Spendin" by I Love McConan featuring oh. Gucci Mane. Oh, I had different. to do. I had to do a bigger label name. I could plug like the Slim Jesus album and some of the songs I liked off of that. <laughs> But honestly, I feel like that is a pretty good return to form for I Love McConan, where, where he's had a pretty big dip since, like, Trust Me Danny in, like, 2014. Like, I don't I didn't even think he still had money at this point. <laughs> but apparently he was getting Gucci Mane, you know, features. He's doing all right. So... He he tried yeah. whoring out, like, Little Peep for a minute, but then, like, Little Peep died, and he was like, ah, fuck... <laughs> Yeah. All right. Here's my three. Uh, I guess I'll start with my big name artist. Uh, I was listening to, like James Blake's uh, "Assume Form," and uh, okay. James Blake's like one of those acquired like electro type of artists where like you either fuck with him or you don't. And uh, right. while this isn't his best album, it's got some songs like "Outcome 2, which is like it's C O M E, not you know. Uh, where it's just like the the production on that shit is like Jai Paul level good, you know, to put it in reference. Yeah, no, I heard all about this shit when it came out. Everybody was like, "What the fuck? How do you do this shit?" You know. Yeah, it's it's a worth listening to, you know. It's just to say, you know. Um, from that we go to you. You may know his name, uh, Nakel Smith and his um new mixtape, two thousand and nineteen. Uh, I didn't you know, I have heard of the guy, and I, but I did not know about this particular thing. I don't think this is a guy. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to draw from now, Kel Smith. But so, what's the song? The song is called Vinny Chase." It's about the second song off the uh, mixtape, and this mixtape, it's it's some thrasher music uh, through and through. But um... thrasher music. There's a couple. There's a couple of Thrasher tunes off of this. You might like it if you just want some head banging that shit. You know. Jesus. But Vinny Chase is a little bit more uh, calm and and collected. It, 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 his hook is really good on this shit, so that's why I liked it. And uh, our final one, our final tune of the day. Uh, let's see. You know, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with "Proud Puppy Lover" by Craig Zinn off of interesting um, choice off of the most recent X project. I suppose you could call it. What about that particular song resonated with you? Hold on, let me let me. I put it in my playlist. I gotta check if it was if it was really valid or not. I'm listening to it now. I can't remember which one this is. This is probably the first time where I heard him like flow for a, pretty much was an entire album. And his flow. Hey, don't play it too much. You don't want this to get copywritten. Oh, yeah. My, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> his flow reminded me of like 
you know, like all the members only uh, guys kind of, at least at the core one, not like you know Rob Banks was like Bay Santana or some shit, but like the core dudes pretty much use like this. They use that one like kind of fast, but not too oh, fast yeah. flow. Yeah. They they kind of share that every once in a while on these member only projects, and his voice with it really is like. It reminded me of Ets, but like a little bit of like ski mixed in with it. So I kind of liked it, you know? Yeah. I just can't get over how infectious Make em Run is on that fucking tape. Like. I've seen a lot of people that like it. Like, I I think, um. I, I would assume that's one of the actual tracks that they worked on when Ets was alive because it was good. So I. Yeah. You know, a lot of these tracks seem like they could have worked on it when he was alive. I think. Sauce definitely could have been alive. It. Uh, it wasn't that particularly good, but you could tell that you know it was something that he would have made. It probably was a throwaway. I would imagine most of these are probably throwaways by him, more than likely. Don't... I like how when they when he when he died, everyone like in his camp was talking about him like he had a backlog like Tupac did, where he could make like six albums after dying. And then, like, all they had to, to show for his death was, like, Skins, which had <laughs> ten half-ass songs. And then they have this, which has, like, four verses. For, for what I'm... For, I mean, this could be a whole other episode by itself, so I'm trying to cut it short. But from what I gathered from S's, like, work material, like, work ethic, he would like to pretty much get an album done and then, like, he'd fuck up somewhere in real life. So he just scrapped the entire album and it's doing an entirely different one. And from what I could gather, like the bad vibes for Eric that could have came out when he got out of prison is going to be like vastly different than the one that's supposed to come out from his fucking shitty ass producer that made Skins. But, you know, who knows how it's going to come out. And hopefully it's basically the same shit as the one for 2016 because they redo that shit it's going to be Skins Part 2, and X doesn't deserve another Skins Part 2. No. No, X, X honestly deserves pretty much what there is out there, I think. I, I mean, there can't be anything else that'll be a slam dunk, like fucking any of his hits. I don't I don't think there is. Like, yeah. And to get on that depressing note, uh, <laughs> we, we hope that y'all enjoyed this... Um, epithet of a, of a, uh, a podcast. Maybe next time the length will be a little bit shorter, but we made sure that we gave y'all something to wait for uh, when we do the next episode in April. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed and uh, peace. <laughs>